Are you sick and tired of recreating your Kali VM for hours? Do you always run out of space due to snapshots? Does upgrades give you headaches? 2,000 years later. Looking for a secure way to store your personal files? In this video, I will show you how I run my Kali virtual machine like a container to solve those problems. What the heck is a container? Containers are lightweight alternative to virtual machines. Virtual machines has their own operating system and applications which are not shared across others, but they share the hardware of their underlying hosts. On the other hand, containers only has the required libraries to run an application. They also run on a shared host operating system, which gives them a smaller footprint. They need Container Engine to run. Some of the popular names are Docker, LXC, and Containerd. Containers provides very fast application launch times. Upgrade and rollback is easy, which can be done by just changing the container image version. These characteristics make containers disposable. If something breaks or your container gets compromised, you can easily destroy and recreate them without undergoing through the pain of installing an OS and application all over again. So how did I set up my Kali to run like a container? I use different tools to achieve this. Inside my host machine, I use VMware Fusion as my Type 2 hypervisor. I picked it over VirtualBox because I get better performance and less lag with Kali. I use Vagrant to bootstrap the base Kali image and Ansible to do internal operating system customizations, such as installing the tools I need. Lastly, I have a remote share that contains my hacking files. I use AutoFS to automate the disk whenever I need the data. Now let's discuss the tools and setup. VMware Fusion is a Type 2 hypervisor which runs on top of a host operating system. This is a free offering from VMware and only available to Mac. Other options would be Parallels Desktop and VirtualBox. Installation is straightforward as shown in their website. Although it says you could try it for 30 days, I believe they still give out free personal license. You need to register to their Customer Connect site and get a personal license. After installing and adding a personal license, you are ready to go. I didn't do any other special configuration on my end. After setting up VMware Fusion, we need a tool that will automate the installation of virtual machines. That is where Vagrant come into play. Vagrant is a free tool that automates the life cycle of desktop virtual machines. Aside from launching virtual machines, it can do other actions such as destroy, suspend, and reload. Vagrant workflow starts by describing the virtual machine. You want to launch such as the operating system image, number of CPUs, and amount of memory. All these are defined in a Vagrant file. Vagrant needs providers. These are the backend hypervisors needed to launch a virtual machine. VMware Fusion is not a default provider, so I needed to install it as a plugin. The base operating system image is packed in a Vagrant box, which can be downloaded from Vagrant Cloud. Vagrant will automatically download the Vagrant box version you specified in your Vagrant file and will cache it on your local disk to speed up the next provisioning. There is a large amount of boxes for different providers and architecture format that you could see in Vagrant Cloud. You have also an option to create your own box and upload it. Lastly, once the box has been pulled, Vagrant will launch an instance of that box into a virtual machine. You can also use provisioners to do further customizations, such as installing a package. This is automatically invoked after a virtual machine has been launched. In my case, I chose Ansible due to its IDEM potent nature. Let's take a look at my Vagrant file. The first two important part is the box name and version. Then I configure it to have a static IP so that it can easily be put into a host file. I also use a private network so that it is only accessible within my computer and will not appear as another host in my home network. After that, I tell Vagrant to launch the VM with the specified host name, number of CPU cores, and memory size. Lastly, I made sure it will invoke my Ansible playbook after Vim creation. My Ansible playbook calls a role that performs a series of tasks. Some of them is to make sure Network Manager is disabled so it doesn't interfere with the Vagrant network configuration. Another example is to create and configure Kali user since the Kali rolling box removed this and replaced with Vagrant user. There is also a task to configure my auto mounter and create the necessary sim links, which we will discuss more on the next section. There are more tasks in this role, but I only show you some to give you an idea on how my Ansible provisioning looks like. Now that we covered the VM provisioning part, let's talk about how I handle my Kali data using an auto mounter. Although provisioning a VM using Vagrant can be automated, doing this together with user data becomes tricky. These data often contains important files that you can't afford to lose. In my case, these contains my notes, scripts, and other configurations I needed to set up my shell environment. They contain private information, that's why I didn't decide to store them in GitHub. I also have a quite large amount of data, so kicking off a restore script via Vagrant will make provisioning a whole lot longer. 
First, I created an SMB share on my NAS. This depends on your brand and model, so I wouldn't discuss the specifics. You may also use NFS as the access protocol, but I wanted to make use of server-side quotas on my NAS so I could better manage my space usage. After creating the SMB share, I made sure I could mount and write to it from my Kali machine before proceeding and setting up the auto mounter. The auto mounter tool I'm using is AutoFS. It only mounts a share when it is being accessed and unmounts it after a period of inactivity. That gives AutoFS advantage over static mounts because it conserves bandwidth by not constantly holding the TCP connections open on both ends. This also reduces the occurrence of hung mounts. As you've seen a while ago, my Ansible provisioner takes care of installing and configuring AutoFS. Let's take a look at the setup. After it installs the AutoFS package, it generates the master map file. This instructs AutoFS to look for the CIFS map file and unmount any shares after 20 seconds of inactivity. The CIFS map file contains three columns, the mount point mount options and remote share. Once the mount point is accessed, AutoFS will pre-create this directory. The SMB credentials must be specified as well as the UID and GID so that files inside the share will be owned by Kali user. By default, my NAS device makes files readable by everyone, so I make sure that only Kali user can access them by using the file and directory mode mount options. Lastly, I specify the remote share path. Do note that a colon is required to prepend as part of AutoFS map file format. Now that we have an understanding how the different pieces connect together, let's see how I run my Kali like a container. For the remainder of this video, I'll set an alias for Vagrant so we can see the total elapsed time for each command. First, creating a Kali VM is very easy and fast for me. I just go to my repository and hit Vagrant up. The version of Kali rolling is already present on my local disk. That's why I didn't try to pull it again. Vagrant then clones the box into a virtual machine instance, which you can see on the left side of my screen. You can also see my Ansible playbook being invoked after the cloning process. As you see, total lapse time is only two minutes. It's so fast that virtual machine is ready before even you finish making your coffee. After logging into the VM, the remote disk was automated properly. My shell history is also preserved. User permissions are correct. There is no need for me to perform any further tweaking. I can already use this straight away and continue from where I left off. If something breaks inside instead of spending time troubleshooting, I can just recreate the entire VM quickly. Most of the time we are operating in a hostile network. If I suspect that my Kali VM is compromised, I could just recreate to clean all malware inside and have a fresh start. Upgrading and downgrading is also a breeze for me. Similar to a Docker image, I could just update the Vagrant Box version and recreate the VM. I find this way cleaner. Aside from avoiding any upgrade issues, it makes upgrade and downgrade process way faster. Lastly, I don't need to spend time restoring my personal data since AutoFS takes care of mounting it inside every virtual machine instance that is created. That makes my data available right away. How about you? What is your Kali setup? Feel free to share below. Let me also know if you have questions. 